What would you say is the number one moral pitfall mm -hmm. that besets philosophers and Christian apologists? Would you, would you say that it's pride? I think so. Pride, which is very closely coupled with arrogance, haughtiness, the attitude of I know more than you do and I can't wait to show you that I know more than you do. But I've grace, noticed a kind of like mm -hmm. comparison that apologists, not, not only apologists but philosophers, what you're doing is when you go into a room, you listen to a paper or your first interaction. I noticed that I did this yesterday. I was listening to this person I met for the first time. And the first thing I was doing was listening to their words, listening exactly how they were speaking to try to judge how smart this person was yeah. and then compare myself mm -hmm. to this other person. It's very common in academic settings because it's competitive. Now, I think we can be competitive in terms of trying to outdo each other in love and good deeds. but that should never be something that is arrogant. So I should learn from everyone and try to excel myself. But the most important comparison is comparing myself today to myself yesterday or myself a year ago, and then drawing on the resources of people who are more insightful and wiser than I am. So if we're among philosophers and apologists, I think we should aim at truth. Whoever is giving a paper or lecture should be aiming at truth. I may receive all kinds of truth. There may be some things I consider to be wrong. And I may or may not bring that up. But when we're talking to unbelievers, as part of the apologetic and evangelistic mission of the church, it's not a game. It's not one-upmanship. And sometimes you have to pull back when you could destroy a claim that someone made. Ask a question or maybe pause and see how the conversation goes. It's often said, you don't want to win an argument and lose the person.